Hello everyone, welcome back to another MCR 3U1 video and today we will be exploring transformations of sinusoidal functions in section 6.4. You can find some extra practice uh, some extra practice on today's topic on page 379. Here's the success criteria for this lesson. We want to understand all the different transformations that could be done on a sinusoidal graph and determine how the changes of the values of a, c, d, and k affect the graphs of f of x equals a sine of k times x minus d, all plus c, and the same thing with cosine. So these transformations with a, c, d, and k, we'll go over each one um, and see how it affects the graph. These graphs, um, of the functions f of x equals a cosine of k times x minus d plus c and the same with sine are periodic just as f of x equals sine of x and f of x equals cos of x are um, they're all pre periodic the differences between them is where the graph is placed and how stretched or compressed it is which comes from the transformations that these four letters give us or four numbers a k d and c which will go over um, uh, how each one affects the graph again in the coming slides. And right here, you can just see that we go, we always start with um, f of x equals sine of x and transform it into this, um, where we choose a value for a, for k, for d, and for c, um, and it transforms the graph in some way. And same thing with cosine. We start with f of x equals cosine of x, and we place our transformation on it. <laughs> and then we get um, another graph. Okay, so let's get started. First, let's go over vertical translation, which is um, done through this number, C. So it's added to uh, the cosine ratio and is at the end of our equation for transformations. If the C value is positive, then we're going to vertically vertically translate up by c units if c is negative then we are we are it becomes a vertical translation down by the absolute value of c that uh, of c units so of course if c is negative we're going to get a never get a negative number but we're going to go down the amount of units that the, the absolute value represents okay and this um per, uh, particular transformation affects the equation of the axis it affects the maximum and minimum values and the range of the function and of course it's because we are moving either up or down so the equation of axis the middle of the graph is going to change the maximum and values are going to change because we're moving the graph and the range of the function is going to change because we're going <coughs> to we're going to have a new max and, an, and a new minimum it will have no effect on period amplitude or domain because the domain is still uh, x is a, an element of all real numbers. The amplitude will stay the same because we're not stretching or compressing the graph. And um, the period will also stay the same because we're not stretching or compressing the, gra <coughs> the graph horizontally either. So if we take a look at the example down here, we start with our graph of f of x equals cos of x. Um, and again, this up here, base formula, could be a sine. But for most of these examples, I'm just going to use cosine. Just to keep it consistent um, but all these transformations of course can be done to the sine graph as well so here we have our cosine graph again remember it starts at one then it goes down to zero down to negative one to zero again and then it keeps going in this periodic fashion um, and if we apply a transformation where our c value becomes four we are simply just going to move the graph the graph up four units so <laughs> if you can notice here at this point we start at one and since we're bringing up the graph four units this point is now going to be five this point down here starts at negative one and then if we add four to that point it becomes positive three and so on for every single point on the graph so the graph simply moves up four units if it was negative four then this graph would obviously go down four units okay and you can see that the axis the equation of the axis 
before was at zero and now it will be at four right we're moving up four units so the equation of the axis will actually just be the c value our c transformation our vertical translation is going to be our equation of the axis our minimum our and our max values change to five and three from one to negative one uh to five to three um and the range becomes uh, that f of x is greater than three and less than five or greater and equal to three and less than or equal to five that will be our range our domain doesn't change our period is the same our, and our amplitude is still one um our amplitude is still one okay so let's move on moving on to our horizontal tra translation which is our d value in our equation again we're using cosine um if d is positive if that value of d is positive then we're going to translate uh this should say horizontal not vertical horizontal 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 if d is positive we're going to horizontally translate right by d units if it's negative we're going to translate left by absolute of d um, and this particular uh, transformation has no effect on period amplitude or equation of axis domain or range unless the situation forces a change in domain or range but in this uh part just uh f with the translation if we translate left or right it does not affect any of these of these uh, properties for the function <clears throat> so if we start again with our cosine graph and we apply a transformation of three right remember this is going to be positive three not negative three because in the base formula it's x minus d so if d was negative this would become a positive sign if d is positive this stays a negative sign so here the d value is just the three so we're going to go write the amount of units and again we start for example at this point we start at, at uh, x equals zero and we move to x equals three this point we start at negative three and we move to zero because we're adding three each time and so on and so forth this starts at three we move to six and the graph basically just shifts to the right if this was x plus three we, we would shift left three units right so that's basically how it works you can see the period stays the same again it's just um six just as here is six period stays the same <coughs> and uh amplitude stays the same which is one um equation of axis is still zero domain is still all real numbers and range is still from negative one to one moving on to vertical stretch and compression um this is represented by the a in our equation um if a is negative so our value of a is negative we're gonna get a reflection along the x-axis so the graph is gonna reflect along the x-axis so if it's on top of the x-axis it'll flip to, to below the x-axis if it's above the x-axis if it's below the x-axis originally um it will flip to the top okay so we'll reflect if our a value is negative if the absolute value of a is greater than one then we will vertically stretch by a factor of absolute a if uh, the absolute value of a is between zero and one not equaling but between zero and one then the vertical uh, then we will have a vertical compression by a factor of the absolute value of a this will affect the maximum and the minimum values the amplitude and the range of the function but will not affect the period or the, or the domain so again let's look at the example we have here on the bottom we start with f of x equals cos of x and we apply a transformation by uh making a equal to negative four okay so first thing we notice is that a is negative so we're gonna have a flip on the x-axis we're gonna have a reflection along the x-axis so as you can see um let's take a portion of the graph and you'll see how it's flipped over here we start down here 
we go up and then down from negative 3 to 3. And over here, from negative 3, we go down and then up, right? So you can see it's kind of flipped, right? The, the uh, peak here, it's going to be a trough here, okay? And now 4 tells us that we're going to have a vertical stretch by a factor of A. So all the points are kind of going to be going to be multiplied by 4. So over here, we had a positive 1, right? We flip it, it becomes a negative 1, and we're going to multiply by 4. That point's going to be negative 4. Over here, we had a negative 1. We flip it to 1, multiply by 4. Over here, we're going to have a 4. And over here, again, we have a negative 1. Flip it to 1, multiply by 4, we're going to have a 4. So the graph kind of just stretches like this outwards. So we're going to stretch these peaks and these trolls outwards. And the whole graph, each point's kind of going to... After the reflection, we're going to multiply by 4, or before the reflection, we can uh, apply the stretch and then reflect it. It doesn't really matter. It'll still end up as the same graph. Lastly here, we have a horizontal stretch and compression this time, um, and we use k in our equation to, uh, to apply this transformation. If k is negative in this instance, we're going to reflect again, but this time along the y-axis. So along that middle line, middle vertical line of our graph, um, it's, if k is greater than 1, not equal, but greater than 1, then we're going to have a horizontal compression. Remember, with a vertical stretch or compression, if a was greater than 1, we would have a stretch. But this time, it's the complete reverse. So if you want to remember, horizontal stretch is the complete reverse of vertical. So if k is greater than 1, we're going to have a compression by a factor of 1 over the absolute value of k, right? So if our k value here is 2, which is greater than 1, we're going to have a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 over 2. We flip it. We take the reciprocal. And if k is between, the absolute value of k is between 0 and 1, we're going to have a horizontal stretch by a factor of, again, 1 over the absolute value of k. So if our k value was 1 over 2, we'd have a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. Because we take the reciprocal, we do 1 over 1 over 2, which just becomes 2. Okay? So again, just remember it is the exact opposite of uh, or reverse of um, vertical. So if it's greater than 1, it's a compression. Between 0 and 1, it's a stretch. And we, it's by a factor of 1 over k, where with the vertical stretch or compression, it was by a factor of just a, or the absolute value. Okay? This uh, transformation will affect the period, and it will change it to 360 degrees over the absolute value of k. So if k is 2, right, we're going to have a compression of 2. So we're going to kind of divide uh, everything by a half, because remember, if k if k equals 2, then we're going to have a compression, right? If it's greater than 1, we're going to have a compression by a factor of 1 over 2. A compression. So we're going to multiply everything by a half, right? So our period is going to become half of what it was before. And since the original period is 360, and we divide it by k, which is 2, we'll get a period of 180 degrees, which is half of 360, okay? So our new period will be 360 divided by k, our horizontal stretch and compression, but we have no effect on the amplitude, the equation of axis, the max or min points, domain, or the range, unless, again, the situation forces the change in domain or range. So for this specific example, I want to use the sine function just to show you the reflection along the y-axis a little better. So if we go from the sine of x function to our new function of sine of negative 3 times x, our k value is negative 3. So we're going to have um, a reflection along the y-axis. Okay? So as you can see from before, this point was here, and now it's on the left side of the y-axis. This point was here, and now it's on the right side of the y-axis, and so on. 
um, because we have completely flipped the graph. So this one was here, and now it's here, this one was here, and now it's on the left side, okay? So we flip it along the y-axis, and we have a three, right, as our absolute value of k, three, which is greater than one, so we're gonna have a compression by a factor of one over uh, absolute value of k, so one over three. So we're gonna compress the graph, we're gonna push this graph inward and compress it by a factor of one over three. So we're gonna kind of multiply every point we have by one over three. So we're gonna multiply this point, which let's say if it was three, for example, then this point right here, these two points, if this point was three and this point was three, negative three, then these two points would be one and negative one, right? And all the points would compress by a factor of one over three. And that would be our, our new graph, our compressed and reflected graph along the y-axis. Okay, everyone, and that is it for the video. That's all the transformation we really need to remember, just four of them. Um, remember uh, the stretches and how they're the reverse of each other, horizontal and vertical. And the translation are pretty easy. We just go up or down or left to right. Um, and then in the next video, we'll be able to apply these transformations to actually sketch some sinusoidal graphs.